Hi and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. Our topic is externalities and the question we're going to look at in this presentation is what is the socially optimal level of trade with a positive externality? We're going to find that with a positive externality, the socially optimal level of trade is no longer the level of trade that we get from our perfectly competitive market. So the second question we're going to be asking ourselves is why does the socially optimal level of trade when we have a positive externality, why does that differ from a market outcome? Let's start with a reminder an externality exists if one person's actions affect another person's welfare, but there is no compensation. And last time we introduced Sam, who had a problem with sweating. And the positive externality was that when Sam used deodorant, that provided a benefit to Sam, but it also provided a benefit to his co-workers who didn't have to put up with his bad sweaty smell. So we have the demand curve, by Sam for deodorant, which is our dotted green line here. And that demand curve is also Sam's marginal private value curve for deodorant. So the dotted green line tells us for any quantity, say three squirts of deodorant, what is Sam's marginal value, willingness to pay at the margin for an extra squirt of deodorant. He's already got two, he's willing to just pay 50 cents for a third squirt. The dotted green line tells us that as well. However, because we have a positive externality, on top of Sam's marginal private value for deodorant, there's also the benefit to Sam's co-workers. And remember that every time Sam uses another squirt of deodorant, he creates 20 cents worth of benefit in total for all his co-workers, because they don't have to put up with as much of his sweaty smell. So, the marginal value in total, or the marginal social value, of the third squirt of deodorant by Sam, is a 50 cent private value, plus the 20 cents in marginal external value. And so the total social value is 70 cents. That's the total marginal social value of the third squirt of deodorant. The solid green line is the marginal social value curve. For any quantity, let's say three squirts of deodorant, it tells us the total increase in value to society when Sam buys that third squirt. It's the private value to Sam plus the external benefit to his co-workers, which comes to 70 cents. So let's start answering our questions. First, we'll start with a simple bit. What is the amount of trade if the market is perfectly competitive? So let's look at the deodorant market, and we need demand and supply. We've already worked out the demand curve. If Sam is a price taker, then the demand curve is a solid green line. And we can put on our supply curve, which is the upward sloping solid green line. Just to remind you, the supply curve is also the marginal private cost curve. Remember, the supply curve is the marginal cost curve, the marginal cost curve to the private suppliers of a good. In this case, the good is deodorant. And the supply curve is also, in this case, the marginal social cost curve. Why? Well, we've only got one externality here. It's the externality on the demand side. It's the externality in consumption of the deodorant. We've already incorporated that by our blue line here, which will be our marginal social value curve. So our marginal social cost and our marginal private cost are the same because there is no externality in the supply of deodorant. And where is our equilibrium? Well, that's easy. It's where supply and demand intersect. It's at a price of 50 cents and at a quantity of three squirts of deodorant per day. So left to the market, Sam will buy three squirts of deodorant per day at a price of 50 cents per squirt. 
the outcome of the private market is our prediction for the amount of deodorant traded and the price of deodorant. Let's ask a different question. What is the socially optimal level of trade with a positive externality? When we have no externality, then marginal private cost and marginal social cost are the same and are reflected by our supply curve. Marginal social value and marginal private value are the same and reflected in our demand curve. The private perfectly competitive market equilibrium is where demand and supply intersect, so marginal cost equals marginal value, and that's why, in the absence of an externality, our perfectly competitive market leads to a socially optimal outcome. Now, as soon as we have an externality, either in consumption or in production, either a positive externality or a negative externality, this equation no longer holds. One of marginal private, either cost or value, Marginal social, either cost or value, one of those equations will break down. Marginal private cost may not equal marginal social cost, or, as in our example here, marginal private value is not the same as marginal social value. Optimality, in terms of the social outcome, is where marginal social value equals marginal social cost. But the market's not going to give that anymore. That means a perfectly competitive market outcome will not be efficient, it will involve a dead weight loss. So our supply curve, the upward sloping blue line now, that's going to be our supply curve, our marginal private cost curve, our marginal social cost curve, and our demand curve, which is going to be the downward sloping green line, that is still going to be our marginal private value curve, but it is not going to be our marginal social value curve. Our marginal social value curve is the blue downward sloping line, which lies 20 cents above the demand curve. The 20 cents, remember, reflects the externality. So remember that the market outcome is going to be here, where demand and supply cross a price of 50 cents, a quantity of three. But social optimality is where marginal social value and marginal social cost intersect. Our two blue lines intersect. And that's up here at a price of 60 cents and a quantity of 3.4 units. So notice that the market no longer gives the socially optimal outcome. It leads to too little trade. The market outcome is only three squirts of deodorant per day. The socially optimal outcome has more squirts of deodorant. We have 3.4 squirts of deodorant per day being socially optimal. So when there's a positive externality, trade in perfectly competitive markets leads to too little of a good or service being traded from a social perspective. And if you think about this, it is sort of common sense. Whenever Sam squirts deodorant, he creates benefits that he cannot capture. When he makes his private decision, he worries about his private benefits. So he will tend to buy too little deodorant because he's not taking into account the positive benefits that he creates for others. Now this is referred to as a case of market failure. And we're going to explore later on in this course how that may justify government policies to try and improve the market outcome. Talk to you later.